Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of What I'm Playing. Today we are checking out this really fun and fantastic little gem of a game. This is Gato Robato, which is a new Metroidvania style game available for the Nintendo Switch and as well as Steam. Those games that you saw will be featured in an upcoming episode, I assure you. I was just trying to skip some of the storyline stuff, but essentially you're playing as this cat who is the cat of this guy that's supposed to be going to this planet to investigate some stuff and we're gonna go ahead and skip some of that storyline so I can show you guys exactly what this game is about so essentially our human uh, slave has sent us out to find some help and obviously cats are afraid of water and I just really enjoy the animation that the cat had right here, you know, just just a little change in the sprite and everything like that. So much character. Oh, Magus is playing Smash Brothers. Probably because of the new update that's out or whatever. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on here. I want to show you guys a good chunk of little gameplay with this here. So like I said, this is essentially a Metroidvania type game. So you got to go explore around, find new power-ups and all that good stuff. So this here, of course, is your save point, but... It also does something really unique. It gives our cat a nice little mech suit that we can use and we can shoot it up and everything like that. So this game does have mechanics where you sometimes will escape your mech suit, but most of the time you're playing the game, you're inside the mech suit, which, you know, hence the term Gata Robato because it's a cat in a robotic suit. So creative name. So this is brought to us by Devolver Digital and Doinksoft. And this game has a very unique aesthetic. You know, it's essentially a one color game, which is very uncommon for something like this. It really is. But um, it reminds me a lot of Downwell in a way, with the way that things look. You know, Downwell had a similar look to this, albeit Downwell did introduce a little bit of color just to mix things up. But that being said, you know, it reminds me a lot of it otherwise. Let's go ahead and grab a little health power-up. Get our cat leveled up for some health. So you get different power-ups you can pick up throughout the game, of course. Like you typically do for these types of games. And as you notice a running theme, I like my Metroidvania games. I like them a lot. Hence why I constantly play these games, because there's a lot of a lot of enjoyment to them. So the reason why I like these types of games is because of the type of gameplay they offer. You know, they offer a linear experience, but it's not too linear. You actually get to explore around and you get to kind of do your own thing in these particular games, which is really cool. You know, I really enjoy that aspect of these types of games. Plus, you know, getting the different abilities and weapon upgrades and whatnot is also really cool as well. Uh, I'm not sure where I did there. Wrong button. I keep hitting the home button on my Switch, which is not what I'm trying to do exactly. Okay, but I guess I screwed that up pretty badly. I wasn't supposed to go down there specifically. But uh, let's just go ahead and do this instead. So you'll notice that the water actually hurt the suit, probably because the big electronic suit, I'm guessing. I don't know. That's not really that important. But yeah, this game does remind me the most of Freaking Downwell, which I don't think this game is the same developer. I'm pretty sure it's a different developer, if I'm not mistaken. I may be wrong about that. Don't forget to correct me, of course, if I am. But I really enjoy the aesthetic style of this game. It's kind of weird, you know, just how much character you can have visually with just one color. You know, it's just black. Like, it's technically, like, less color than what you got from, like, a Game Boy, even. Because at least that, you had the color of the screen, too, you know. The, that puke green nonsense that they had going on. They kind of mixed that up. So we got our missile power up, finally. That'll let us uh, do more damage. We could break up some of these blocks and things like that. We gotta get our mech suit back, of course, so we can press on. 
And then, of course, the uh, missiles can overheat. You don't want that to happen, naturally. You have to watch out for that. Obviously, if they overheat, you won't be able to use it. So do keep that in mind. Can't go that way. We're going to have to go this other way now. And that we've got the missiles ready. We can climb up these little uh, platforms and whatnot. Shoot that frog with a missile, too. It deserved it. It totally deserved it. <laughs> so after we just get past the killer bees here, we can finally move on and begin to uh, try to attempt to complete the mission that our human overlord, I mean, slave, has tasked us with. You know? He's a useless human being. He got stuck in a spaceship, so we got to go save the day as a, our little cute little kitty cat that only says meow. Because that's all cats can say. <laughs> but I digress. So, Captain Roboto has a lot of style, as you see here. We've got this rat, uh, which you encounter a couple of other times, I would say. You know, it's basically a boss enemy you have to worry about. And of course, you gotta try to your, do your best not to get hit by these little projectile attacks, which I'm getting hit constantly instead. So I'm probably gonna die to this boss fight. Boss fights can be pretty challenging in this game. They are pretty tough. Actually, we're just gonna go ahead and get ourselves killed because I'm pretty much dead as it is anyways. And we're just going to go ahead and try that boss fight again. This game does not mess around. It really does not. The only thing that's really annoying about this is these cutscenes that happen before the boss fights. You're kind of stuck with them. You kind of have to watch them. You know. So we can shoot the missiles, of course, to do extra damage. And that will be handy, of course. Let that blow up. Ah, great. I gotta wait for him to do that thing. Ah, great. Alright. I think we've just about got this boss dealt with here. As long as I don't get blown up again. I'm gonna try to keep my distance here. But uh, alas, I'm just completely sucking here. Very tough little challenge here. Alright, so now we got a chance. There we go. Got the boss defeated there. So this game does offer a pretty good challenge. But it's a fair challenge. It really is. You get plenty of hit points to take damage. You got really good checkpoints with this game. So you're not going to get anything that's too frustrating. You know, this game will offer you plenty of incentive to keep on playing, but it doesn't, like, basically hand things to you either. You definitely have to earn your victories with this game. But, you know, I really appreciate the design of this game, which is excellent, you know, despite what seems to be a very basic experience with this game. Uh, you can get about roughly three hours of gameplay here. Uh, you do have all kinds of different color palettes, so I think I can actually uh, show you guys some of that stuff here. Maybe, yes. Yeah. So, oh, okay, so for some reason it's not letting me do it there. But, I have unlocked a bunch of different palettes and whatnot, so I'll show you guys that action here. So, I guess we'll just load game? I've already beat the game. This is the very end of the game. As you can see, I've got a different palette going on here. You've got all kinds of different choices to really mix it up. So let's go ahead and move some grape. Nice and purpley for sure. So I think, yeah, I think this is where towards the end of the game. So yeah, this is the very last mission. I was hoping I was able to restart a game and uh, keep the palette settings just so I could have kept playing as it is. But yeah, you can see my timer right there, two hours and 58 minutes. I didn't spend a whole lot of time here, but you do get some different power-ups, of course. I didn't even get everything, apparently. There are a couple of items that I never got. So, you don't even have to do everything to complete this game. So you can get a little bit of extra time 
if you really wish. I'm kind of curious to know if uh, there is extra content that I can peruse on. I don't want to delete the save, that's the thing. And I don't want to go to new game either, but yeah, this is Gato Roboto. It's an excellent little Metroidvania type game that is very cheap also. I think this game only costs like $8, so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. It was obviously it's a shorter game, but it is dirt cheap and it's just a good time. So I highly recommend this game. Let me know if you guys have played Gato Roboto, what you think about it. Uh, but till then, Dow Phoenix out.